Welcome to Reflections for anyone looking for just a little bit of church. This week, Jesus disturbs the Pharisees on the Sabbath by justifying his disciples' plucking of grain as they walk along and his healing of a man's hand. Let's listen to Mark's gospel. One Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples were going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life? or to kill. But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. Here ends the reading. I've talked before in previous reflections about the importance of keeping the Sabbath by not working. It is important to refresh ourselves away from work and be at church while focusing on our triune God. But what the Pharisees and all of us need to understand is that such honoring of the seventh day of the week does not exclude helping others and feeding our or others' bodies. Indeed, doing good work for God's kingdom, including nourishing our bodies as well as feeding or helping others, is not only a priority for the Sabbath, but a higher priority than following faith traditions. Taking time off from work in a faith tradition and temporarily avoiding what I call the stuff of life is important. But working to the benefit of God's people is even more important. The Pharisees to him seem to have lost the purpose and higher priority of the Sabbath, or at least they have not understood that they should from time to time rightly set aside faith traditions for higher purposes in God's kingdom. Isn't Jesus admonishing us, the weak, the weekly churchgoers, as well as the Pharisees? If you are like me, it is relatively easy to honor our God with an hour or two on Sundays. But don't we often, after church, do some lawn work or carpool children or do a myriad of other activities? thinking that our time at church fully honors our Sabbath commitment. I certainly do for many, if not most, weekends. I'm thinking, however, that such rationale is no different than that of the Pharisees. It is relatively easy to do traditional things while leaving out our even more important priorities, like helping and feeding and loving others. In our confession of sin, we recognize that sinful behavior, ours and others, include 
what we have left undone. What have you and I left undone this week that could have helped those who are struggling in any way? In my mind, Sunday is less about being a Christian and more about doing what is Christian. If we are cognizant of any who struggle on our Sabbath day, then it is time to act. I suggest that this Sunday we each break out of any bad habits of complacency and take action. Be like Jesus and help feed and or heal someone with our words and actions. Call or visit the relative or friend who is struggling for a friend who has fallen ill or fallen into difficult times, drop off a cooked meal. Or ask a shut-in if there are any appointments that they require for a car ride in the coming weeks. If we use our best God-given gifts for others on Sundays, then these gifts are truly placed on the altar like any monetary gifts. I like to think of Sunday as gift giving day, like a special birthday for those in need. If we give our gifts by doing some of the above or any number of other actions like them, we will be showing the world what is meant by being a Christian. For it is less about going to church and being with God and more about bringing to any who struggle with food or health or any life circumstances. We need to bring them God in whatever way that means. And maybe, just maybe, these activities will creep into our Mondays through Saturdays and become part of our daily rituals as we become the Christians that God wants us to be. And the Holy Spirit will, like the spice rack we talked about two weeks ago, enliven all that we do. And then all of God's children will say, Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This week's song choice is Send Me by Jen Johnson and Chris Quilela. I like the lyrics, Here I am, Lord, send me. They're the perfect words to send us out each Sunday after church to do God's good work in all of the world. Enjoy. Enjoy.